What's up and welcome to Champions of Lore, a show all about the kick-ass stories behind some of Idle Champions' coolest campaigns and characters. Every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on twitch.tv slash CNE Games or later on your favorite podcast service, B. Dave Walters and Aaron M. Evans talk about all the Idle Champions lore that's fun to know about. If you're here with us live in the chat, you can leave a question that I, Trevor Bettis, will ask them later in the show. But until then, Aaron, B. Dave, take it away. <laughs> I noticed you changed it too. It's fun I to did. know about. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. Take Valid. the pressure off. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that because it's uh, every time he's like, you need to know. And we're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah. sometimes you need to know the rumors that are running around Neverwinter about Lord Neverember and, you know, other things that might be going mm -hmm. on in the, the realm. So It's enriching. You commit a faux pas. <laughs> no, of course not. How dare. You know, what I what I need to know about is this sweater. This is kind of perfect. <laughs> I'm, I'm festive. It's Very a D&D &D ugly it Christmas it sweater. Is, that is, and I love it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Like, whatever happens today, it's, it's already Trevor already, half blessed it's us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Please, after you, my lady. I'm Erin M. Evans. I am the author of the Brimstone Angels Saga, a six-book series featuring the champions Havilar and Farida um, as they roam the realms fighting the Nine Hells. I also play Cecilia on Dungeon Scrawlers. You know, we should probably talk more about the Brimstone Angels series at some Why point. Why not? Mm, interesting. <laughs> Uh, B. Day Walters, I say words about things. It is solely my mission in life to make Aaron laugh because it is like. <laughs> it's nice to have an easy mission. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. That's it. You, you, you increase satisfaction by lowering expectations. That's how you, that's, that's how you, that's how you do that. Uh, B. Day Walters, I say words about things. Uh, I am the writer and co creator of Dungeons and Dragons, a darkened wish, and the dungeon master of the official tie in stream for that. Season three is on now, uh, Thursdays at five on uh, twitch.tv forward slash D&D. &D. Uh, do a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm running an unannounced game, but I got to tell you now, uh, for noon on Friday for World Builders, level 20 D&D &D with a cast Ooh. that I assure you, you will not want to miss. Pretty sure we're announcing it tomorrow, but I'm telling you now because we're friends. You woke up early <laughs> to come and hang out and chat with us. Yeah. Yeah. You will not want to miss it. I promise. Look for the announcement, sounds like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we're 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 gonna be talking about some uh, s certain champions of an idle champions game. Uh, but first, we thought we'd do change things up and do a game first, which Aaron has gotten ready for let's, us. Let's Keep like fresh. set the set the scene. <laughs> Just because B Dave, you know, said he wanted to. No, uh, we thought because we don't have any uh, anything new coming out this week, uh, we were thinking of ideas and we thought, well, maybe this week we'll do lore related to Brimstone Angels. Um, so you have in the game, you have Farida and Havilar, uh, who are twin sisters. They are the protagonists of my novels. Uh, this one. Boom. Oh, just ready to go. There it is. That's yeah. a, that, isn't it such a fulfilling flex? Yeah, it's it's not as good if I just oh, hold wait. up my Kindle that it's on. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Double. These are the it's... only two I have out here. Ooh. Oh, that's a really but... great cover. Is that Frida or Havilar on the, on the is, hard box? So this, is, this one's Frida. This is the sort of classic Frida picture that they use a lot. Um, I, I notice when, like news stories about D&D &D pop up, people like to grab this picture. So it shows up like in my Facebook feed and I'm like, what? And it's never about my books, but that's okay. It has, I like that it has purpose. This one is uh, Tyler Jacobson is the artist. That is a really great picture uh, it's, on it's, the cover of a really great book. Thank it, you. The cover is why this I picked one. up that one and then felt lost because I didn't know it was a sequel. <laughs> you, you did in fact judge it by to its cover. Fair, to be fair, this one is written so that you can come in not knowing mm -hmm. what's happened in the first two books, because um, this marks the sort of transition from fourth edition to fifth edition. So this this is in there. It is, however, the kind of book where like you have to slow down and absorb. If you're a fast, fast reader, it's I would say start with this one. That one's Havilar. That's the Ooh. only official Havilar depiction. Huh. So <laughs> she didn't awful. make the cover on the other ones, which I'm sure she thinks is absolute BS. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, twin tieflings adopted by a dragonborn. Uh, Farida uh, makes a pact with uh, the Cambian Lorcan, um, which gets them sort of kicked out of their hometown, which, to be fair, they didn't like anyway. Um, they become bounty hunters with their dad. 
they roam Faerun taking jobs and start getting the notice of the Nine Hells and all kinds of other baddies because it's D&D. So uh, there's six books. Um, they range from Neverwinter in the first book. Um, and then at the end, they're in Timanther way, way, way to the east. <laughs> um, so I thought it might be fun to start us off to play some Two Truths and a Lie um, <clears throat> using lore from the books. Um, so you don't have to have read the books. If you have read the books, these questions will probably be a little easier. Um, <laughs> if you study for the test is what you're telling me. <laughs> study for the test. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's also, I have to admit, I'm like, I have, I wrote these last night because we did come to this a little late. Um, and I have no sense of how difficult they are. So <laughs> these may be like absolute stumpers or they may be like. Difficulty uh, may vary. It's yes. true. It's true. Right. Prepare yourselves, chat. That's right. So there yeah. should be. Oh yeah, and uh, and uh, Jay uh, in the chat is going to have these available to for you all to vote on in the chat, and then I'll be able to see in our text document what you all said uh, while B Dave and I discuss our our mm. thoughts while we shamelessly stall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So first set is villains. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one, the primary antagonistic forces come from the nine hells. Nine Hells Fact, Malagard, the Hag Countess, one time Lord of the Sixth, is the only non-devil to ever rule in the Nine Hells. Uh, in Lesser Evils, the Adversary and Fire in the Blood, uh, Risen Netheril is their big bad. Um, the City of Shade was also known as Sultanthar and was the last of the 54 original floating enclaves of ancient Netheril to fall. Uh, and then in The Devil You Know, the last book, Returned Unther becomes a threat. The only known queen regnant of Unther, Kubaba, ruled not from Unthalas, but from the city of Kish to the north. Hmm. Where, 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 are, you, where are you falling on? The, what's your first thought? I also did? realize I made a, made a tiny mistake, but we'll see if I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the third one is, is, is the lie, because the first one is true. There was a hag ruler, and I can't think of any other... Uh, non-devil rulers uh, and there was a lot of words and adjectives in the second one to be made up <laughs> um, that is that is why uh, that, that is my my logic there could, could I get um, in 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 a bait and switch of where a certain person set their court I feel would be a pretty easy deception uh, could I could I ask for the second one again please yes uh, I'll skip Thanks. the part where it, how it connects to the books yeah. mm -hmm. um, so the city of shade was also known as Tulthantar, Fultanthar, I can't say this very well, mm -hmm. Fultanthar, mm -hmm. and it was the last of the 54 original floating enclaves of ancient Netheril to fall. Actually, God, to tell you so the truth, specific. it probably would help Chad to hear the other two at one more time just as well. <laughs> Fair well, enough. Then, yeah, play, play um, Malagard, the Hag Countess, one time mm -hmm. Lord of the Sixth, is the only non-devil ever to rule in the Nine Hells. Uh, the only known queen regnant of Unther, Kubaba, ruled not from Unthalas, but from the city of Kish to the north. Hmm. That's where I'm planting. That's where I'm planting my flag. What do you think, Trevor? See, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, like, okay, when you, when you see, this, this is my problem with these questions. I always end up <laughs> going deeper because I'm like, you said the only non-devil to rule, but I'm like. Well, is it were they a devil beforehand, or did they get turned into a devil? Does that count? Oh yeah, because Zariel wasn't a devil yeah. at first, but like ended up being one. Mm. Uh, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, have something from the chat here. Uh, Kid like 101 said, "I'm gonna go with B." Ah, statistically, I have a 30 percent chance of being correct each and every time. <laughs> so sure. they're not wrong. Uh, those, those aren't bad odds. We'll cover the spread. All of us will pick one if someone wins no matter what. So B, B Dave, you're you're going you're going with C. I'm uh, playing my flag on C. I'm gonna go with A. I, I just have a feeling about it. And maybe it's because I understand more words from that one than the others. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see. Um, yep. Let's see. Has, has, has chat Is reached a consensus here? I don't know if they have. But uh, Crimson uh, underscore Fox underscore two says, did Tiamat technically rule for a time too? I don't think. No, she's trapped there. No, she wasn't charged for a time. Was she? Um, yeah. But her type is... Her type is fiend too, but she's not a devil. Oh yeah, she's a fiend. she's a type fiend, but not type devil. 
Interesting. But now, but, but now I'm thinking about Devil Dragon. <laughs> I mean, first of all, that is the world's best title for literally anything. Book, video game, and um, tequila. Brand. <laughs> Just... Devil Dragon. No, you are you are correct. Tiamat did rule for a time though, and she is not she is not a devil. You've made a compelling point. <laughs> and, but he, are we wrapped? So, oh no, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Um, okay, so we do have our results now. Okay. No, uh, hang on, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. No, no, give me a chance, <laughs> but before you tell us whether or not it's true, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about moving my chips over to A. That's a compelling point. But yes, please tell me what chat thought. So chat says uh returned Unther is the uh, the false one. So also, that is so, so three. Also, freaking chat's got Google, but um <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, don't I'm, use I'm, Google. Come on. No, don't. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. If you have the book within arm's reach, yes. But if it's oh, just... We're, yeah. we're going college test rules. <laughs> open, open, open book test. Yeah, right. But not, not test, the internet. But not Google. Just not the internet. Book. Yeah, no. Right. Wikipedia is notoriously unreliable. Um, <laughs> I uh, No. Keeping my chips on the third one. Okay. It is the third one. Ah. But with the caveat of... As I read that out, I remembered Tiamat. I'm like, dang it, I don't remember where she falls. But Malagard is the only one to uh, that I knew of when I wrote this. I forgot about Tiamat. Um, she was not <laughs> turned into a devil. She was a night hag, and she was uh, left as a night hag. And oh. then she was punished by being reformed into the sixth flare. So that's as what happens does. when you don't do your job well. Um, or when you do do it well, you. honestly, it, down there in the hills, you know, like there, I mean, there's like at that point, it's like if Asmodea says no, that wasn't right. Was it wrong? Was it right? <clears throat> um, I mean, but this, that's the problem. <laughs> what do you do when your manager's the god of lies? You know, <laughs> when he's like, you really phoned this one in this week. You're like, did I? Know? Like it's not a lie anymore. Yeah, did I feel like I crunched a lot of souls into soul coins? I'm just saying, I just feel like wait, our numbers were up overall. <laughs> Uh, the uh, the third one, just for the record, um, Kubaba is actually the only queen listed on the Shumerian kings list. And since Unther is kind of based on real world Mesopotamia, I thought it was a fun little crossover. Well, you know, although to, to asking about that, when mm -hmm. um, well, you know what, we'll finish the two truths and a lie because then I, I do have <laughs> okay. a, well, actually, you know what, since what? since you're 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 the DM right now, you you okay. tell me, I have a. I have a question about your process. This is relevant, but it will be relevant, you know, at the end of Two Truths. And is there, do we have another question? I mean, I have more, but yeah, I don't so mind here. When, when you were, you're, like you were just saying things like um, uh, it being based on like uh, actual Mesopotamia and things like that. Uh, when you were writing the stories, mm -hmm. did you come up with the setting first and then the story second or the story first in or the setting first and i just tripped myself up but you know what i mean the story <laughs> you, know, you wanted start. to tell or where you wanted to go first. um i think i came up with so i came with the characters first um and then for uh for different books there's different requirements so brimstone angels was a tie-in to the neverwinter game um, so it was established from the beginning when I got that assignment, right, when I got that book contract, that it would be set in Neverwinter. Um, so that's where we start. We start in Neverwinter. Um, and then it became uh, the, the next book, Lesser Evils. Originally, I had intended to go to Cormier because I had a character, Bryn, who's Cormierian, who has sort of like issues building in the first book. But then they came back and they had a book that they were going to do that involved uh, the Jantarum. And I was like, okay and they want to be to tie into the the Jantarum event um and so then that book ended up being set uh in the high forest in the uh sort of in the in these ruins of a of a netherese arcanist because i wanted to find somebody that both the Jantarum and the harpers would be not happy with <laughs> um and then enemy. i was like and then i'll go to cormier but then it was the sundering <laughs> <laughs> so um for most part, it was the setting was handed to me. Um, starting on book four, I got to choose where I went, um, and then because at that point the pieces were more thematic or um, like Ashes of the Tyrant tied into the what's the one with the demons in the Underdark called? Because I always just call it in my head demons in the Underdark. Uh, I mean, what was the adventure? It's, it's not oh, an accurate. Oh, uh, uh, out of the abyss. Out of the abyss. Yeah. That one. Hmm. 
I think I like I have the working the working title. Like there wasn't a title for a little bit, and so I just called Demons in the Underdark. Um, so then it was like, okay, there have to be demons in this book, and you have to put one of the demon lords in the book. Um, but otherwise, there's a lot more flexibility. Uh, so and then the the last book needed some giants. That genuinely and that was sounds so fun. that was a little more movie. Those so in that case they moved it moved where the character's story needed to go. Mm. Um, so Unther is honestly not my. It's not. Unther is, and Mulharan, I, I really like uh, ancient Near Eastern culture. Like, like that was, you know, once upon a time, like, this is where I wanted to, to put my career. Um, and so part of me is like, this is this is an oversimplification. And I think that you're not doing it justice. Except it's for a game. It's not real. <laughs> Except it's not real. Yeah. People's lives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, again. so it would not have been my first pick. Um, but once you get into Time Anther, that Time Anther is sitting on top of Unther. And so that sort of uh, interplay, especially when Unther starts coming back, is really important. Um, I did go through, and when the god Enlil shows up, his heralds uh, sort of will sort of chant a, a prayer, and he s took the actual prayers to Enlil from the Akkadian and mm -hmm. just transliterated them. <laughs> it's like, well, you don't, you wouldn't know what it is anyway because you don't speak Untheric. So yeah, I, it's it's funny that you say that because one, I'm all like, you've all heard my lamentations about Chult, but two, I always like the the witch divinities they've just like picked up completely because like um you know some of the um, uh mount celestia there's a uh, the uh, the plane that um overlaps between the Faerunian deities and like the greek deities uh which um, again so eludes me for some reason uh the arborea arborea no hmm. not arborea hmm? Oh, well, either way, there's a place where it's like, you know, real human gods and the Faerunian gods are there. And then it's like, here's all this dramatic, lavish stuff. Also, here's really Enlil. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. You're it's like, like a weird thing where it's like they go through and their avatars come through. and then But then there are pieces where, like, I get very opinionated, like, like Inanna in the, the realms is lawful evil. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? No, unacceptable. Not at all. That's not. That would not be her my jam. house. My yeah. this was in my in my Dragonborn dating game. I made it not a not be evil because you know. You um, know um, that is the single greatest like <laughs> geek cred statement ever in my Dragonborn <laughs> dating game. I made it not a not evil because no, like. <laughs> um, the power of being a DM, right? I mean, mythology I is the lore for like life. Yes, I think we're gonna need to move on to question two. Okay. That way we can get into yes. some lore later. All right. Question two is location based. Mm. So, first book takes place in Neverwinter. Before the destruction of Neverwinter, first by the eruption of Mount Hotnow, then by the Spell Plague, the city was known for three spectacular and intricate bridges called the Dolphin Bridge, the Winged Wyvern, Wyvern Bridge, and the Sleeping Dragon Bridge. Only the Winged Wyvern Bridge survived to the current era. The third book, which is the other one I have, <laughs> uh, takes place. <laughs> In the High Forest. Within the High Forest, there is a small mountain range called the Lost Peaks. Within the Lost Peaks are a series of pools called the Fountains of Memory, which will show upon request any time and place in history, and will occasionally open portals to those places. They were held sacred by the Deep Moans, Deep Gnomes, but were badly damaged in the Spell Plague. The fifth and sixth books take place in Timanther. Timanther is the nation of dragonborn from Abir, and it is ruled by a council of elders whose cl clans all date back to their people's time on the other plane. To replace an elder on the council, they must be challenged in combat, but the elder keeps their sword and the challenger must fight barehanded. Ooh, hmm. Where's the line? I, I, want, I want to say it's the third one, but here's the problem with that. Timanther is the only area of this... Uh, of these questions that my knowledge is is not great on, and I'm pretty sure the first two are correct. I know the first one is correct. I, I'm like a hundred percent sure on that one. Okay, ninety nine point nine. I'm not. I'm never that sure of anything. Um, where are you falling, B. Dave? Yeah, because uh, I, I did a bunch of research on Neverwinter yeah. for uh, season two of A Dark and Wish, and I'm all <laughs> like, wait a second, but are th is that right? I'm pretty sure the bridge one is correct. And you see, I, I, I ran a fourth edition pre-written uh, adventure that I'm pretty sure used that portal in the forest. So I'm 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 almost sure that that is correct. Mm. See, I don't remember anything about pools or reflection in the mountains nearby, especially because I took the story out into the mountains nearby. But that doesn't mean it wasn't there. Yeah, I feel, and, and then I did a lot of research on a beer for also a Dark and Wish season two, and I. Ritual combat where you one is armed and one is unarmed—that does not really actually seem that like um, a 
for an honor-based system that isn't one, I'm going to say that the third one is the one that's not true. That's where I'm putting my... Uh... Okay. All right. Uh, what does well, chat say? Uh, we're, we're, we're still giving them some more time to okay. put some votes in, but, but Garwar comes in and said, if I had known there was going to be a test today, I would have stayed up all night cramming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I stayed that... up 30 years cramming, bro, so that's why here we are, yeah. That is my favorite reader compliment, though, is like, I've been... I am. It's four a.m. I'm still up. I have to finish this book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry to ruin your sleep, but thank you for making my day. <laughs> also, you're not sorry. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a little part of me that's always like, everyone should get all the sleep they need, and that is important. Yeah, but also, uh, also. The, while while Chad's still deciding, uh, uh, Randy author uh, Kaba said, "Oh, hey, uh, Randy." Uh, when I watch things like this, I'm like, Forgotten Realm should be allowed as a foreign language credit in college because dang, every <laughs> other word is... <laughs> what is that? Re realism? I don't I don't know what that says. Realm... Realmanese. I don't know how to say that. Realm oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I get That's it. That's like, Randy like... Henderson, who is the author of the Fin Fancy Necromancy series uh, from Tor. And he also plays Rogar on Dungeon Scrawlers. Hey. Yeah. Also, oh, well, oh, go ahead. Do we have a consensus, or do they need to hear it one more time? Because that oh, was yeah, a lot yeah. of words. That's a good idea. Why, why don't yeah. we do it one more lay, time? Lay, lay them on All us right. one more time. Before the destruction of Neverwinter, first by the eruption of Mount Hotenau, then by the Spell Plague, the city was known for three spectacular and intricate bridges called the Dolphin Bridge, the Winged Wyvern Bridge, and the Sleeping Dragon Bridge. Only the Winged Wyvern Bridge survived the current era. Uh, within the High Forest, there is a small mountain range called the Lost Peaks. Within the Lost Peaks are a series of pools called the Fountains of Memory, which will show upon request any time and place in history and will occasionally open portals to such places. They were held sacred by the Deep Gnomes, but were badly damaged in the Spell Plague. Uh, Tymanther is the na nation of Dragonborn from Abir and is ruled by a council of elders whose clans all date back to their people's time on the other plane. To replace an elder on the council, they must be challenged in combat, but the elder keeps their sword and the challenger must fight barehanded. Hmm. You know, I said that doesn't seem very uh, chivalrous, but then again, if your goal is to maintain power and not chivalry, of course you'd ring it like that. <laughs> hmm. I'm still, I don't know, I'm still going for things, but again, I, that's that's the gap of my knowledge, so yeah. I, I feel like that'd be the one I'd go for uh, for the most. Oh, I'm, yeah, I, I, oh sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I don't know the one about the pools, the the reflecting pools, but that seems like a pretty ready-made adventure hook. And I'm just, I feel like I would know about Dragonborn ritual combat on a beer, especially because you created a lot of the culture for the Dragonborn, as we've discussed, Aaron Evans. Yes, I'm putting my money on the third one. Okay. Although, wait a second, if she created that made it true, it's just the lore. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Move this lore now, regardless. Yeah. Uh, we do yeah, have a consensus from chat. Uh, chat uh, agrees it is the Timanther one. You no. are correct. It's yeah! The, uh, the Dragonborn are ruled by a person named the Vanquisher, who is elected every 10 years. The clan leaders all vote. You can't, you, you all put forth a candidate, and then they vote, and you can't vote for your own candidate. Uh, the... Uh, the second one, the Fountains of Memory, is actually a real important element in the adversary because the uh, the Shadow of our, the, the Netheries have made a sort of secret camp full of Chosen that they're gathering. But the way they're finding them is that they have used these fountains to kind of pick out, like look for people who are about to manifest these abilities mm -hmm. um, and pull them in. And so Farida uses them, and there are, the book has these sort of interlude sections that are her looking in the fountains and, and finding out things that she's missed because there's a big time jump where she gets uh, trapped in the hells. It's a bummer. It's a, it's a, it's a heavy book. <laughs> Just a, for the record, I feel like you can't be elected vanquisher. Like, I feel like that's one of those... <laughs> You gotta grab I didn't make that, that part. ring. Yeah. <laughs> make that part up for the record. Yeah. I'm it just, is a I'm, bit it's a bit dramatic. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? You're all like, oh, can I please be vanquisher? Please. How, how many people you have, have you vanquished? Uh, <laughs> set you up. A, a number. A, a number. number. <laughs> Quite a number of vanquished, yes. Exactly. I don't you know can't... why I'm a dragonborn with this accent, but yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. You cannot locate them because they've been thoroughly vanquished. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Here you go. I love it. Uh, Perfect. All right. You ready for another one? Yes. Okay. So these are ally themed. Okay. All right. So one of the big groups of allies are the Harpers. 
Uh, so there's several Harper characters in my books. Um, those who harp strive for peace and balance, but have gone through six reformations and two schisms since their founding in 148 Dale Reckoning, uh, including a minor proxy war in Kalimshan. That's my term for it, but. Their members have included such luminaries as Elminster, Lyriel Bainray, The Symbol, Adalek and Rand and Versissa Thurgiesh, and Nala from my books, and one of Manshun's clones. Uh, the Jintarum. They're not good, but they're sometimes helpful. Uh, the Black Network is a mercenary company with lax morals that has allied with beholders and keeps flying snakes to carry their communications. Gent, Jintarum, Gentilar, Gentish, and Gentil are all different words you have to use when you write about them. Members include Manchun, clones, Zul Chimril, whose name I can't say, <laughs> Sessica Parader, and Mira Zawad from my books, and a whole lot of Gentarum and idol champions that you get to fight. That is uh, a the, lot of Zendor music. <laughs> what? The Cormirian Royal Court. Cormir has been ruled by the Overskir family since the year 26 Dale Reckoning. There is a law in place where if a ruler is resurrected, they will be magically sterilized and exiled, although most suspect the Purple Dragons will execute the monarch once beyond the border, and whoever casts the resurrection must be executed. This is because of Galagard Overskir, the first, later, the second, later, Draxius, the Never Dying, made himself the 53rd, 54th, and 55th King of Cormir. Members of the current court include Queen Raedric Overskir, the Dowager Queen Osper Goldfeather, Prince Barovis, and the inimitable and super bitchy Verona Goldfeather. Okay, my books. I'm going to start off. If the third one is a lie, your just making up skills are astounding. That was like three That's paragraphs. my job, though! But, <laughs> but no, but like, that was just, like, good lord. <laughs> oh, man. Where, where are you feeling, B-Dave? I'm glad I got the first two right. Okay, so, <laughs> I feel like we you're, you're you're losing you're losing track of the real the real mission here. All right, hang on. Wait, you give 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 us those again. Give us those one more time. All right, I'll give you a slightly shortened version. Yes. Uh, okay, Harpers strive for peace and balance, but they have gone through six reformations and two schisms since their founding in 148 DR, including a proxy war in Kalimshan. Uh, the Gentarum uh, are a mercenary company with lax morals that have allied with beholders and keep flying snakes to carry their communications. Gent Gentarum, Gentilar, Gentish, and Gentil are all different words you have to use when you write about them. Uh, Cormier has been ruled by the Overskir family since the year 26 DR. There is a rule in place where if a ruler is resurrected, they will be magically sterilized, exiled, probably murdered, uh, and whoever casts the resurrection will be executed because they had a king who made himself king three times in a row using resurrection spells i know i, know, I, I got i know where i'm putting my chips but this time you first trevor because i because I, I went with it first the last two times i i got i i want i want to say the harper one and i i want to say that because i feel like i've looked into harper's and i don't remember reading all of that the Zentarum stuff sounds right, and I'm sorry if I I I, I feel like now I've been pronouncing Zentarum wrong. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, but like I I because I, uh, uh, somebody that I, I I know did a they helped work on a supplement that was all about the Zentarum and everything like that, and I'm and I read through it, and I'm pretty sure I read all of that stuff, and and I'm almost positive the third one's right too. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the the Harper one. See, I was gonna go with the Zentarum one, but you make a compelling argument saying that you think you read all of it. This is I, this is like this is high school all over again, where I'm all like, we're both wrong, but you're more confidently wrong than I am. So, <laughs> hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, he's writing quickly. I like the cut of his jib. Um, <laughs> see, see, that was in high school. That just meant I was like, I'm thinking about Gundam Wing way too much to study for this test. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, you're 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 correct. If if the the third one is correct, that is a very oddly specific thing to have made up. Um, doesn't mean she didn't. I know. Um, I know. Yeah, doesn't mean she didn't. She's a professional maker upper. See, she's got that um, smile right now. I was like, I don't know if that's pride. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to cover the spread. I don't know what's Chad saying. Uh, oh, oh, we can do chat first. Uh, chat yeah. says it is the Harpers. That is the that is the lie. 
Chat says that Harper's is the lie. Okay. So, so uh, uh, okay. To make this even more difficult for you, B. Dave, uh, this either means uh, if Chat gets it, uh, you, uh, you know, like if you say something different, they win. If you mm -hmm. say something different and get it right, you win. If you both get it right, you tie. If we both get it wrong, we tie. Ooh. It's true. That's true. Because this hey, is the they... last one, right, Aaron? This is. Oh no, actually, I do have one more. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, that's a little so, short. So well, do we have different. time for one more? Nah, we have time because I kind of did that in case it was. I, yeah, I think I think maybe I think maybe this should be the last one. I think yeah, this is the last one. Some lore. You know what? You know what? You know what? Because I'm a monster and will force a stalemate. I'll go with Chad. You will never <laughs> defeat me, Internet. Well. To the end, I grapple with thee. <laughs> All right. Well, you're right. It is the Harpers. Right? All right. Uh, the Harpers have gone through four reformations, not six. There's been one schism. We made up the proxy war. Uh, they were founded in 324, not 148. And the list of people that uh, I said were Harpers, only Elminster is actually a Harper in that list. Okay. Uh, actual Harpers that you might know, uh, Danila Fan from uh, Elaine Cunningham's books. Um, from my books, uh, Tam Zawad and Dal Parador, uh, who are Harpers of Waterdeep. Um, and then in Idol Champions, uh, Jahira mm -hmm. is a Harper character. Nice. Hey. Well, that and means if you run out of stuff to talk about. I have some short monster themed ones. So I would just, I would just like to say, Aaron, three for three with a uh, with I'm a impressed. heavy dose of help from Chad on that that other one. But, but, that, but, but three for three. Yeah, it uh, yeah. it means that I lose uh, again, <laughs> <laughs> which is why yeah. I'm just here to like say intros and outros and say funny things occasionally <laughs> and and, ra and serve looks with those sweaters though and serve <laughs> looks. Yes. I'll have that, to make sure um, to post a picture of it later so podcast listeners can see the ma mm -hmm. magic. Cormarian Cormarian Law is a uh, important element of Fire in the Blood because I would say that is so nuts. That's like a, that's a really like like right? badass rule and stuff. I like that. If, if you get <laughs> resurrected and you're uh, overscure and noble, but you're not ruling, you just you go to the end of the line of succession. So like everybody it. else has to die for you to get the title, but it otherwise. May it makes sense, though, because past a certain point, even in D&D, &D, past a certain level, call it 12-ish, death becomes an inconvenience at that mm -hmm. point. You know, you're all like, nah, we're going to be, um, this, again, this, we're going to, especially now that uh, in, in, with the recent changes in Tasha, is that more people have access to Revivify. It's even more like, oh, you know, this is going to cost us a diamond in, a, in, a, in some travel time. Uh, so having it, like, written into the fabric of a society that you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> It's if, if we go through the effort of assassinating you, you know, <laughs> legally and above board, you don't get to be done a lich king. Done. Real mm -hmm. real quick before we get into to, to some more lore, uh, Star Chaser 43 say, didn't Trevor say ties go to chat? I'm pretty sure he did. Let's say that he did. I didn't hear that. That's not what I heard. <laughs> Yeah, I have no and memory that, of this Star Chaser. I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know. I'm like, guess what? The podcast listeners don't have a written record either. So, <laughs> looks like it was a tie again. You will not evade me, Chad. You won't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yep. So, so Aaron, what, what, uh, what's some lore that you want to talk about? Uh, that was it. That was what I brought. That was. That's all. That was all. It is. No, nothing <laughs> else. It's all gone. I mean, to her credit, she prepared very thoroughly for the exam here. It's true. You know? It's true. Well, it, it, I, I, I do have a, a more craft-based uh, question that okay. is directly related to this, though. Um, do you have, because this this applies to both your storytelling and also campaigns, doing this at your table, and, and even a lot of the design uh, structure of Idle Champions, um, do you, um, how do you weight how much time you spend on the backdrop and the lore, which is kind of the setting and the context, and how much do you emphasize more the the characters and what's uh, the, the in their participation in it, if that makes sense? It does, yeah. No, I think the characters have to come first. Like, if you, in a, in a novel, if you're not buying into that character's experience, it's it's just not as satisfying. And I think especially for a series where the whole thing is like, you're going to follow these people through all these books. If it's all about the backdrop, you don't get that carry through. Yep. And so the first step is like, what is this character's story? Like, what is their journey through all of this? Um, and then finding sort of if an external arc, a conflict a, a thing they're dealing with that parallels that where they have to deal with this problem inside themselves in order to 
make their way through um and for a, a series finding the way to make that kind of go like this so they don't solve all their problems and are perfect and therefore boring yeah um. <laughs> and, and of these these places they went in the sixth book which one of these um if you could narrow it down to just one that you love the most <laughs> which one of them is your favorite because i've watched your eyes glow talking about the hells but there's also there's other places as well same with time anther <laughs> i love time anther um i love time anther because i i put so much love into it um like i it, that's, I think that there's like, people will say a lot, like if you write tie in, they're like, oh, well, you don't have to do any of the setting stuff. Uh, the actuality is like a lot of the broad strokes are done mm -hmm. and there are sometimes small strokes done, but the things that you maybe need in the moment aren't there. Yeah. Um, like just as a really random example, uh, in the book, fifth book, uh, Havilar develops this ability uh, that was in the game uh, that we played. Uh, if Havilar is near to a demon she starts building up this almost like this buff that she has to pass on to someone else and if she doesn't she starts to get physically ill oh. and if she doesn't pass it on she throws up which is bad um so she's in the middle of time anther there is a demon somewhere but it, she can't find it because it's a shape changer um and so she throws up all over the place on the street of time anther right and i'm thinking okay this is an enclosed city there's vomit on the ground what do you do? Right. So I'm like, okay, well, what would you do? And so I had a dragonborn come out and just like blow their fire breath weapon all over it, burn <laughs> it up. Right. It's oh, like, okay. I feel like baked, baked tiefling puke could be like oh. the worst. I mean, it's going to stink first, but then it's gone. Right. Like, what are you, what are you going to do in that situation? You don't have indoor plumbing to rinse it off. It's not outside. <laughs> You have to do it, something. I mean, the answer is prestidigitation. Also, I feel like... You don't have a lot of wizards. Like, that was a thing at the time that, that Dragonborn were kind of like, so-so on magic. I feel like it's going to stink, but then it's gone is like the best mom advice, by the way, where you're like, I'm really upset about something. And you're like, look, it's going to stink, and then it's, it's gone. It's bad, but then it's over. Uh, I think yeah. that's another thing is the Dragonborn have a lot of like, like, this will be good for you in the long run. It builds character. What was the average lifespan of Dragonborn? They're humanish. They're normal. They're humanish. Yeah, yeah. right. They're right, normal yeah. human. Um, they, they mature faster, but they, they're humanish. Jay in the right. chat says, uh, frozen breath weapon, then you just scrape it away. There you uh, go. The, the, does, does, does any Dragonborn have a sawdust breath weapon like an elementary <laughs> school where you're like, blah? Right. That, um, that, that cleaning solution that had the vaguely yeah. bubblegumish smell. Mm -hmm. uh, you were saying that Dragonborn uh, normally aren't wizards. Uh, my my best friend, when we first started playing 4th edition, like first playing D&D &D ever, he was like, I want to be a Dragonborn, and I want to be a wizard. And he Do did, it. and it was great. And everyone that we ever talked about that character in front of him, was like, you made a Dragonborn wizard? <laughs> See, I think that's yeah. super interesting, too. <laughs> Although, I will say, I did, uh, this is not... This is only like vaguely referenced in the books, but the the thing that they were given, the, the Dragonborn in fourth edition were given these giant bats that they fly, like that's their cavalry in Ooh. Jared Thymar, which is really cool. Except do you know how much poop bats make? <laughs> yeah. Now they're giant. And they're right, they're roosting in this pyramid city, like up at the top. Like this is nuts, right? It'd be mountainous, there, yeah. There is this this sort of the element in there that that was given where they are. They're avid gardeners and they know a lot about horticulture. It's like, okay, well, that makes sense. But that's still a lot of poop. So I had this Twitter rant a while ago about how Jared Thimer has likely destabilized the guano market for cell components. <laughs> and I gave them, when they go to war to Uthunther, they have an entire regiment, the Ninth Red Cohort, who are wizards that specialize in fireball. That's awesome. <laughs> because they have all the guano they need. That's, I love it. That is well, but but to the, the to to poop our army. to our greater point here, <laughs> I'm bad poop. Uh, I'm bad. The, the 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 greater point here is like, but that that is a really interesting and ingenious way to like weave the lore into the narrative and make it come to life. You know right. that if this is true, then this other thing must be true. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I think a lot of it too is like when you're writing something like that, and I, I think it's also true to an extent in a game, although a game is tending to happen much faster and there's there's less like mulling time, mm -hmm. um, but you need something, right? Like, okay, they're going to um, 
they have to go talk to the the people in charge and who are the people in charge and where are they located and do they have a different choice when they go to someone else like those those pieces come up you know mm -hmm. as you're as you as the kind of the conflict comes and then they decide what to do next um there's a lot of catacombs under Jared Thymar. And so what's in the catacombs? Like, how do the bodies get placed? This made a big difference because the ashes of the tyrant, uh, there's a demon running loose and the demon is in the catacombs. And so it's like, okay, well, what tools are available to the demons? And so there's things that people have said, there's the canon, sort of stuff. And then there's what's implied by that canon. And then there's like, whatever you want to embellish on top of that. Um, and what comes from other things that you know, like if the Dragonborn are very... They feel very strongly connected to their ancestors, right? Well, okay, somewhere in that catacomb, I feel like there's going to be a monument to the people that got left behind in the beer, right? Mm -hmm. To the people they don't know what happened to. Like, that would be very important. Um, and they're also, like, they're atheists, but, like, they, or they're just sort of, like, not interested in gods. Um, but they do these things with their dead. Like, they have these established catacombs. And so, like, where's the piece that fits those things together? I think that is the most fun mm -hmm. part of yeah. doing yep. this stuff. Yep. Um, I've got a... Uh, I've got two questions uh one that relates to time one that's going to change the subject a little bit but before i do those garwar says where's the dragon born with the lysol breath uh he's, but he's like <laughs> lighting it with a with a lighter like to show off for his friends there. <laughs> just real quick question and this came up on silver and steel this week is uh mm -hmm. did, did our dragon born hatch from eggs yeah Ooh. We had a whole running gimmick with our Dragonborn character, Akira, which Obo Lauren's probably in chat. I'm not even going to check. Okay. She's infinite. She's eternal. The, the <laughs> next one was from Obo Lauren, which just says, Dragonborn everything! What I say? What I say? <laughs> yeah, you sensed right. her. <laughs> exactly. Like, she, we, we, we are connected in here. Yeah, no, come on, Akira. I told you you'd like to Dragonborn hatch from eggs, and you made it seem like a weird question, and apparently the answer was yes. Okay? Yeah. Right. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it, it it is true. It, back in the day, the those the the lines between the classes was much more rigid. Where it's like, yeah, you can play. At first, you really couldn't play in anything. Then you could play in anything. You just shouldn't. Now you really kind of can. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the the uh, lore question for uh, this area uh, is uh, from uh, Hostile Eldritch uh, that says, uh, <laughs> "Aren't the Vanquishers assistance wizards?" Uh, I don't, no, 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 the, uh, so the, there are, I mean, there are wizards, like, let's be clear. Yeah. I think the idea is sort of like culturally, yeah. overall, Dragonborn are like, but you could hit it. Yeah. Wait, well, Lord. and you see when, when people gave my, 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 my friend problems, it was because they were like, but the stats don't work. It's like, <laughs> I don't care. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. it is not an optimal choice. It no. isn't, but it doesn't make it a bad choice. But, yeah. Right. right. That, I, that dragonborn like... thrown around flame sphere and fireballs left and right, man, it was great in fourth edition. <laughs> Yep. There's, I I um kind of had some of the clans specifically be more like more into it. Like Kanjan Telecor is one of the Timantharian clans that's like they have plenty of wizards. Like they're like, no, this is just another way to do things. But if you think about like the ma way magic worked in a beer is not the way magic works in Toril. So yep. the magic that they had access to was a completely different thing. So they've had a hundred years to adapt, but people who are a little extra traditional are like, you can just hit the with the sword. See, but um, that's all. That's oh, oh no! Please finish your thoughts. Sorry. I was going to say, but the the assistance to the sort of the assistance to the vanquisher. There's a, a class called the adjudicators, who are sort of like they're nah, they're a little like the police force of Jared Thymar. They're sort of like the people that answer to the vanquisher. But it is a system where um, you have clans that sort of like take care of their own business, and the adjudicators jump in when the clans are not actually taking care of their business, or it's a kind of. Uh, in between people problem that is one of those things where at least to me and mine and i guess I, i've seen this in, in in other in other settings it's like the logic of this kind of collapses when you're like so let me get this straight i could stop time turn into a dragon i could you know see through space and time raise the dead call down meteors from the sky with my you know my will mm -hmm. alone but I'm gonna hit it with a sword. Like, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. What, what are you, yeah. It's one of those things that I, I, I agree. I have kind of a, a hard time sort of figuring out how you integrate, like, because it's, 
because the idea is that adventures are the cream of the crop, right? Like, yeah. like being able to do this stuff is really hard and you're very special for it. Yeah. So most people can't be a wizard that does yeah. kick-ass stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, mm, yeah, that's he, the focus of all the all the stories you tell in D and D. So it feels like yeah. I don't know. I'm being the Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the next question we got is uh, from Victor Bengston. I I totally messed up your name, and I apologize. Uh, the lore question is: um, uh, Can non-humans be part of the line of succession in uh, Cormir? That's a wonderful question. <laughs> uh, it's not been tested. Ooh. So, I mean, um, that if, is a possibly potentially someday a question because uh, my character Bryn in the line of succession and Havi uh, eventually have children. So technically, there is a tiefling in the line of succession. I doubt it. It would involve a lot of people dying before. I mean, theoretic was important. Theoretically, though, a tiefling could show up at any line of succession at any time. <laughs> like, Surprise! Well, uh, now. Yeah, yeah, great, 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 great grandma was getting, you know, she <laughs> formed a very different kind of pact. These are definitely know? the uh, the fourth edition Asmodean style tieflings yeah. where you you know, you know what you're getting into. <laughs> <laughs> Your commitments were made. Yes. Um, but Happy's delightful and she'd look amazing in a tiara. Before I, I get into, you know, what, what, you know, crazy things chats put in here. Uh, there, there is a, there is a book question in here for you, uh, Aaron. Don't know if you want to go into because maybe for future things. Uh, but uh, uh, Lucina Valkyrie says, um, "There's a, uh, there's a paragraph at the end of the final book." Half devil, he reminded himself, looking down at the city tucked against the bank of a river. Maybe there was an argument to be had, a balance to be struck in this new world. Whichever it was, Lorcan was red uh, was game. What is <laughs> what is Lorcan's goal moving forward in the D and D universe? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, Lorcan mm. is sort of um, one part deuteragonist, one part antagonist, depending on the moment. Um, he's Frida's pack master. Um, he is a Cambian. Um, and so one of the questions sort of, one of the things kind of early on is that Farida, Farida the tiefling, um, she is the fourth edition style tiefling. So it's not like I have cute horns and a funny shadow. It's like, no, for real, <laughs> my ancestors, you know exactly what my ancestors were doing. Uh, and, you know, she gets a lot of the people saying like, well, you're not, you're not actually a person. Um, cause what you look like and you'd probably don't even have a soul maybe, um, which is upsetting, but also, you know, she sort of comes to a point where she's like, I know who I am. Uh, and in the second book, she realizes that Lorcan isn't fully a devil. He's half devil, right? His father was not, well, you find out whose father is anyway. <laughs> um, and so she realizes that like, he has these moments where he acts kind of, human and and like he possibly could be a better person uh which is tough and so she gets him this chance to like go and do better basically she gets him out of the nine hells at the end but uh spoiler but uh she so so what that is is like he has this opportunity now he has this opportunity to go out and live his life with that sort of ensouled half right does a cambion have a soul well they have a human parent or they a tiefling parent in this case like sure maybe um how do you know if you live in the nine hells and you never get a chance to like make a choice because you have to do what your superiors say so here he has a chance to make a choice is he gonna do anything good with it that's a wonderful question if you've lived your whole life like being sort of trained toward selfish acts um can you Put him in your game. Do something cool with him. <laughs> Funny oh. that you say that because that is literally the plot of the entire third season of Dungeons and Dragons: The Dark and Wish. <laughs> <laughs> you've been raised your entire life to be awful. Can you be not awful? Would you even choose to? Like, do you have the vocabulary to be mm -hmm. not awful? Um, let, let's see. Uh, oh, that. The, 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 I'm going to uh, bring this one up. Uh, Evil Emperor Zerg uh, question. Uh, now that Tasha, uh, now with Tasha's 
culture, and everything, you could have a Dragonborn Blade, uh, blade Singer, uh, the best of both worlds, hitting things and then casting magic. That is actually what my best friend did in fourth nice. edition. He yeah. he saw Blade Singer and he desperately wanted to be it. So we worked out this whole plot of how his Dragonborn learned to be a Blade Singer. And man, that first session where he got to be that was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually said and I talked with Jeremy Crawford about this because there is an answer to this question but Ooh. it's like why are there only half human half things you know why aren't there half halflings why aren't there quarterlings I mean you know or why isn't there a half dragonborn half elf like to me besides the fact that I would have just been like YOLO I would have told that story <laughs> is like you have an elven ancestor and oh. it's verifiable there's elves old enough to remember so there you go you're in the club kid oh you my know, god it, seven yeah. years ago me is such an idiot I should have done that that would have been <laughs> such a cool plot point especially when you can do things like polymorph oh. like okay yeah. one thing with the dragonborn is like if dragonborn lay eggs how does this work yeah. right mm -hmm. but if you could be an elf that just makes themselves a dragonborn for a little bit so that mm -hmm. you know Mechanics yeah, yeah. work, but uh, beating yeah. what, 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 <laughs> what comes out of the egg? Yeah, what comes out of the game? Elf pops out of the egg. Surprise. Apparently, a, a dragonborn blade messed there. up omelet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but beating what you're talking about with the with the um, half parents and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my players for our most recent game, you know, he he always plays uh, uh, members of a family that he's been making, and one of them was a half orc, and one of them was a halfling, and so <laughs> he's like, I want to have a third brother where their two parents had him so i want a half orc halfling and so i yep. went on to dnd beyond and i made <laughs> oh, it and, nice. his, and it worked out pretty well i loved well, it in in uh theogony of kairos which was my first streaming series i had a baby that was half asmr half halfling he's a, a, a oh. asmr halfling and i named him crawford for jeremy crawford that is what <laughs> that character's <laughs> name is crawford i've ever heard crawford nice. the the half celestial halfling yep mm -hmm. oh he's, he's the chosen one he's a little he's a little <laughs> god baby Yep, that's mm -hmm. so cute. Um, yeah, there is there is a very deep lore answer that uh, maybe we'll we'll keep that one in our back pocket ooh, for another discussion. But it's uh, nice. you know, there, but there there's I realize magic is its own answer, but there <laughs> is no logical reason why like human DNA is like the universal emulator for for genetics, but like there are no half dwarves or there are no you know yeah. yeah. Also, the answer is the origin of orcs was really really messed up. Okay, that's all I have to say. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's go back uh, through some of these uh, questions and whatnot we got here in chat. Uh, uh, Uzor uh, asked this uh, back at the beginning, this about uh, the show that you were talking about, B Dave, at the beginning. Uh, is that going to be on Twitch? And if so, which channels are going to be showing it? A charity thing? Yeah. Uh, Patrick Rothfuss, Twitch. Ah. Uh, yeah, Patrick Rothfuss. That's where most of the World Builder stuff is being hosted there. Uh, follow me on Twitter at B Dave Walters. Like, no, you're gonna fight. You're gonna hear about it. Like, like, like tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is a, a this, very this, worthwhile follow. It's for the quite a cast. Quite I, a cast. <laughs> I, I told my friends recently uh, when uh, I was looking through Twitter while I was playing games with them. I was like, you know, you could say I follow B Dave on Twitter because he's a really influential person on oh, with D and D. You could also say that I follow him because I do a stream with him and he's a really cool guy. You could also validly say that I follow him just for memes. I'm serving something for everybody. I'm, you know, there's, 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 oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, there's there's a chicken for every pot on my on my I, Twitter feed. I legitimately yeah. wonder sometimes, like, does B Dave get annoyed with how much I like his posts? <laughs> I, I do. It's you know how in 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 D and D, like the deities are like maintained by worship. No, I'm sustained by likes <laughs> and, and retweets. Hey, hang hang on, wait. I'm I'm gonna tell you just. Uh, uh, I'm telling you guys. Um, two of the players that are gonna be in the game. Um, th this will be, here you go. So We're you can news. see that you can see their faces here. That's two, two, wait, hang on, I misspelled that one. Yeah, that's just two of the players right there. Oh, oh, the, oh, that only we get to see. Yeah, yeah, only you. Oh, 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 this is, this is not breaking news for you, Chad. Mm. Right, right now. Right. Oh, oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Be excited, chat. Be excited. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Randy author is back uh, saying, Trevor, where did you get that boss sweater? Uh, I can't see it all, but it looks like it's some kind of dwarf cleric thing. It's actually got all of that. Ah, I can't get it. Here, I'm just going to move it. It's got all the classes on it. It's got some D20s. This, unfortunately, uh, was from Think Geek, which is no longer a thing. Oh. RIP. GameStop killing it. 
But um, I do know that there are some D and D uh, ugly sweaters that are on like Amazon and stuff like that. And uh, this was a great shirt because I got it for way more than I should have paid for it. And then the next week it went on sale, and they said no. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> hey, your sweater outlived them, so I think you won. You won in the end. You know what? Yep. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, Victor's back. Uh, this is about the the pl the crossover plane that B Dave was talking about. Uh, he says, "Was Olympus the place that?" eluded you <laughs> no like legit I, I i think i think it is arborea but no there's one of the one of the planes actually the uh the greek gods are in fifth edition well so are the yeah. um the the irish gods are also in there as well uh if you look at the back of the the uh, yeah arborea yeah. yeah yeah i yeah, was right yeah, the, uh, when, when I saw that the the uh, the Tuatha Dig Dana were in the Pantheon, I'm just like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a D&D &D character that's from Ireland and is in the D&D &D <laughs> world. And yeah, I really wrote, lost. I wrote yeah. four pages and handed it to my DM whose eyes glazed over. <laughs> Fell asleep in a fairy circle, you know, woke up outside Waterdeep. Also, I appreciate that I'm co-host of a show about lore, and I'm so proud of myself of knowing it was Arborea. I'm all like... <laughs> <laughs> well, geez, Maria. Yeah, I've right. proven I belong here. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Very. Uh, Obo Lord had uh, one that legitimately made me laugh during the stream <laughs> that I tried to keep quiet, but this had to do with the succession of the vanquished. Uh, she says, "Does a strongly worded letter count as vanquished?" <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what you say in the letter. Right. Right. You know, uh, as per my last missive, <laughs> <laughs> then burn after burn after burn. This is a society where technically, at least until recently, you weren't considered an adult until you'd killed a dragon. So that's bam. Can I just I say? I feel like your strongly worded letters must be fairly strongly worded. It has to be worded in dragon blood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> For the record, by the Brimstone Angels books, Aaron can't say it could be gauche, but I can. Not only are they ob objectively wonderful reading, you will uh, be supporting a creator and a homie. And uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you like the cut of Aaron's jib, and let's be honest, <laughs> you should buy her books and read them. I'm, I'm going to be honest. The... ebook and audiobook. Yes. Uh, Most uh, easily. Uh, if yeah. you want a physical copy, they are rare and expensive. I found that out the hard way recently. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, oh, go get, oh. Uh, okay, th this this might be slightly mean uh, because it's kind of putting Aaron on, on the spot, but I, I like this one. Lucita Valkyrie comes back and says, can Aaron do a Havler or Frida voice? <laughs> um, I've done a Havilar voice because uh, I played Havilar in the uh, Founders and Legends game. Um, Havilar is she talks a little fast and she sounds a little ditzy, um, but she's a, kind of a savant about murdering things. So that balances out. I um, love that. <laughs> I, because the image I have of her is from the game where she's got this you know, giant weapon and she's marching for it. And I was just like, I'm just going to kill every single one of you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a line she has in a, when she's getting together with Bryn and Frida's like, this isn't going to last. I think Farida probably sounds like just very serious, Aaron. She's like, this isn't gonna last. She's like, she's like, I know, I can have fun anyway. And Farida's like, he's in line to be king of Cormier. And Havilar says, like, I don't want to be queen, but if I was, I would look amazing in a crown. <laughs> if that didn't no. sell you on reading these books, I don't know <laughs> what will. True. And just remember, every hellhound was once a heck puppy. <laughs> <laughs> There is um, a new Zang Hellhound puppy in the last. Let's say books, that. Another, three, another nod to you. Another nod to you. Three books. Yeah. Zuni shows up in Fire in the Blood. There we go. But that is going to bring us to the end of today's lore show. Uh, Aaron B. Dave, where can people find you and what awesome things are you working on? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Aaron M. Evans. Uh, you can also watch me on Dungeon Scrawlers on Wednesdays at 6.30, twitch.tv slash Dungeon Scrawlers, playing Cecilia, who is not Farida, but is also a warlock, except she won't admit it. Oh, we didn't get to your warlock rant. No, we didn't. Oh. Sometime we'll have my warlock yeah, rant. Yeah, we're, we're, I, I, I still, <laughs> I need to hear it. I need to hear it. 
we'll just save it up for when the show's almost over. So if you guys, if this causes the schism. <laughs> yeah, communicated. Or we become the bitterest of rivals. Halfway through the episode, I just changed the title to the last episode. <laughs> in here. It doesn't say Aaron of the Thousand Evans. It says heretic. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. It's the source of strength. Uh, B. Dave Walters. I say words about things. Uh, follow me on Twitter at B. Dave Walters. Again, doing a game for world builders this Friday at noon with a lot of people that you will really enjoy believe me so that's probably gonna be announced tomorrow uh dungeons and dragons of dark and wish thursdays at five on twitch.tv forward slash dnd the first two seasons and i guess about half of season three are all up on youtube nice uh, you can find me on the Difficulty Class podcast every Friday and Wednesday with, you know, some manner of D&D talk in there. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at The Trevor. And uh, if you in, if you happen to catch the, the you know, the short notice stream that me and some other people from streaming shows did, uh, you, you should pay attention to my Twitter coming up. Just just uh, just keep a heads up on that, especially if, it, if you like Garlock, if you like him and his onions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I completely forgot I'm going to be on Todd Talk on D&D Beyond tomorrow at 2 Pacific. Uh, I don't I don't think that was a secret. If it was, surprise! <laughs> I'm be on Todd Talk tomorrow <laughs> 2 Pacific. We got be all the breaking news here. Oh, yeah, and then tomorrow night, I'll be on with Patrick Rothfuss making his character for the game. So, oh. hey, uh, definitely you're going to find out tomorrow, because I'm surely. If uh, if you haven't gotten enough B-Dave, you're going to get this week. It's, it's never enough. Or or <laughs> if it's, it's, it's yeah. like Turkish coffee. It's No, it's to, you know, a sousson. <laughs> Parry your ways. Uh, thank you to Jay for moderating the chat as always and handling the voting uh, fantastically. Thank you. thank you very much as always. You you, you make the stream work. Um, and thank you to Codename Entertainment for let's talk about some some cool D and D and having some fun doing it. Uh, if you missed the show uh, or you're just coming in late, uh, you can listen to it as a podcast at 2 p.m. today. And remember, there's an extra gold chest code in that one as well. Uh, and for podcast listeners, don't forget that you can write into Champions of Lore at CodenameEntertainment.com with lore questions that we can uh, answer in the future or maybe make an episode about you can suggest a few things um, also Obo Lauren said that I didn't mention the show that we're actually on together which is Silver and Steel which is also Tuesdays <laughs> at 6 Pacific <laughs> on D&D &D Beyond Get him, Lauren. So, she did she did I was like okay okay yeah. I'm sorry I have a lot to keep track of okay sorry okay right that's why uh, she said just follow me on Twitter don't even try don't even try <laughs> Oh, and I'll and I'll tell you Eve at the time. Eventually, what we'll do is when we come to you, we'll just put up a screen that's your schedule. <laughs> it's, just, it's, like, it's like the open and crawl of Star Wars. Yeah, right. That's it. Play the that's music it. too. I love it. <laughs> Uh, for those uh, live with us, be sure to come back at 1 p.m. for Improvised Champions. And if you're listening to us, we'd love to see you next here in the chat, uh, next week here in the chat, so that you can have your input, answer some questions, have some fun with us, and it'll be great. Uh, and uh, but yeah, thank you to everyone for watching and listening. Until next week, champions out. <laughs>